Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. Today's a really, uh, a really, really difficult day. It really, really is. Today is two years since. Today is two years since my nan closed her eyes and left this world. It was my mum, myself, my eldest brother, and my twin brother who were by her side when she passed away. And this world certainly has not been the same since, and it never ever will be. Um, a lot of my subscribers will know um, that Nan is my whole world, and uh, I, I grew up with my Nan. Um, I grew up with my Nan always being there. I have a very, very close relationship. Um, with my parents, and my nan uh, was always at the parent table too. I was blessed almost to have three parents. Um, and growing up, we always done every, always done everything together. I always remember mum, nan, me, my twin brother, or my brothers, or one thing or another. And, and if anything ever happened, nan was always there. She was always, always there. Um, I'm blessed in this life to have incredible, incredible parents, and I love my mum dearly. And it's just so incredible that the fact that the Lord felt fit to bless me the way he did with my beautiful, amazing parents and my beautiful, amazing nanny. When you lose somebody who's so, so close and so, so dear to you, it changes you. When Nan passed away, it's very much like that she took a piece of me with her. Some days, I, I find it that tough still. Some days I can just randomly cry. Every day we talk about her. My mum and myself and my brothers, we talk about her all the time. Um, my dad had... Uh, I have said to my dad about how blessed you were, my mother-in-law, and he agrees, and he really, really does, and, and there was that magic there, and, and, and Nan is just so loved. She really is. She was blessed with a huge, huge family, but unfortunately, they some of her family didn't always see the blessing she was. Um, my nan had a very, very difficult life, a very, very hard life. She was a very hard working lady, and right from her very start of her life, she lost her mother. And um, my nan always went through life saying that she always wished that she knew her mother. And often now, I think to myself, do you know what, nan? You're up there and and you, you've now met your mum, and I often think, I wonder how things are going, or I wonder how things are going all together up there, because my nan had a lot of sisters and, and brothers, and she was one of seven, and um, she lost her mum, I think, when she was about four years old, and I think how that, that must have changed the whole pathway of her life. But you know what? She never gave up in life. She she continued to work very, very hard. From the age of 18, she left home and she joined the Women's Land Army. And she done an incredible job there. And I know how much she loved that time. And um, I've got some treasured stories with her from that. And, um, and then she went on and she met my grandfather and she raised a family of seven herself. And... Um, they had a big house and um, and I believe a wonderful life, a wonderful life together. And um, there's some magical memories. I think they had they had uh, there was times um, I think in anybody's life ups and downs all the time, isn't it? But I think in the ultimate core, um, it was a it was a beautiful relationship. And um, my my nan lost her uh, husband when I was only one years of age, so I never really knew my grandfather. But I. I, I know him and I love him for him being my grandfather and for my mum being it's her parents and for my nan and the stories and things. And do you know, when I used to stay with my nan um, and grow up in my teenage years and things, I always stayed with my nan at the weekend um, and I always loved it. It was always like a holiday. It really, really was. Um, and first thing in the morning, if I wasn't quite up yet, I could hear my nan. If she was a bit down or if she was a bit stressed or something, because, of course, she had her seven children, and she would always make it that she would be the first one there, always. And um, I could often hear my nan talking to my grandfather. It was the home they shared, and they bought, and they, and they, and they built together. And, um, 
and I could hear my nan always talking, and you know, off to him. And I've never, I've never, I'd never let on that I'd seen this or heard this. And I remember um, very often if I was um, helping my nan around because she had a big home, so it was, and it was always like an absolute palace. My nan kept it absolutely immaculate, and it was beautiful. Um, but often I would help my nan, um, sort of like with the vacuuming or, or the dusting or sort of um, the lawns because she had huge gardens, and um, it was. It was, it was just so, it, it truly, truly was a blessing every time, every minute I spent with my nan. And um, honestly, sometimes if I was polishing around on my grandfather's picture, there used to be lipstick. And um, I used to think that was so sweet that even after, just, it was almost like now that there was no time had passed. It was almost like that he was always there with her, always. <sighs> nan truly, truly is a very magical, uh, very amazing lady. Um, and Anne was a very, very glamorous lady, very glamorous lady. And when she walked into a room, you'd think that she was from a film, a film star, honestly, she really was. Always, never ever without her makeup, always dressed up to the nines, that was my Nan's phrase. Very often loved her high shoes, always bag on her arm, ready to take on the world. And if there was ever a problem with any of her children or her grandchildren, she would take your hand and literally she would fight and literally stand with you through thick and thin, through good times and bad. If it was good, she'd be the first there to celebrate. If it was bad, she'd be the first there on your side. If you were unwell, she would be there. I remember once, um, and my nan had, uh, in her later years, she started uh, developing um, some memory difficulties uh, at about 82, but she was very fine for quite a few years. But um, it was 83, where we, we tried to sort of almost protect Nan a little bit more with her memory and things. Um, but still very, her abilities, her capabilities, very much her own. Uh, very, very strong and determined lady. Very, very classy, very up together, very just spot on. Absolutely, as sharp as a knife's edge, honestly, um, in her capabilities. But we try to safeguard her a little bit more, which was sometimes the wrong thing to do. Um, but we always treated Nan as Nan. Even though her illness advanced, we never ever changed how we treated her. Never. Um, she was always my Nan. She's always my Nan. She will always be my Nan. And my mum is very much this. She was succinct to actually that. It was always that person, regardless what happened. And I think that's a lot of what sometimes is wrong when people are diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's or any of those type of horrific illnesses that actually that when this person develops a problem with their memory and they can no longer remember, it's almost like sometimes in society that that person is then looked upon that they're not capable or they're not that person they once were. They are. They don't change the person who they are. It's just unfortunately doors shut and and that's how we described it with Nan that doors open and often she would be there she would be able to have those conversations she would be able to be present in those conversations and she would remember and click and everything would be fine but sometimes a door wouldn't open when it needed to and sometimes she would need a bit of encouragement or a bit of help in conversations or direction um but no matter how things got we always informed her what went on in the family what was happening what I was doing with work um and my mum and her were, were, were best friends. Honestly, growing up and having that bond of my mother and my grandmother, I was it was so special to see always and to be part of that as a third, as my mum's son and my nan's grandson. And me, do you know, sometimes I would it could almost bring me to tears, and very often it's brought tears to my eyes. Just so magical, and I'm so, so blessed in this life. Do you know what? I can't even remember where we go in that conversation. I'm talking about my nan, about how incredible she is. Um, but do you know what? Uh, I am very, very passionate about that, that, that a person never, ever changes. Just because they have a memory problem, they are still them. My nan was always still my nan. She never, ever changed, and I never chose to look at it any differently at all. And do you know what? Nan was a very, very determined, very, very resilient lady. She really was. I can remember where we uh, left off. Um, I'm the wrongdoing of trying to protect or trying to overstep the mark because at the end of the day, no matter how long that person has that illness or whatever their memory is or whatever their abilities are with the dementia or with Alzheimer's, they are still the parent. They're still the grandparent. They're still the adult. 
never ever ever looked that and I remember I made the mistake one day of trying to protect my um now of the stress and the worry because my mum went into hospital very very quickly very very sudden uh very very scary thankfully it was um of course it was horrific at the time but she had appendicitis she had her appendix removed and I kept this from my nan for a couple of days and then when I finally told her within seconds I kid you not and we live my nan used to live on the opposite side of our, our town where we live and within it was straight on our home phone it was to my to my dad um to, to, to come and get me, come and get me to pick up, I need to be with my daughter. And I remember my nan getting to the house, marching up the stairs, my mum's led down in bed, and um, following the surgery, and my, my nan making her way up to the room, <laughs> making her way up to the room, looking at me, giving me a look, much to say, I would have expected better from you. And she was sat by my mum's bedside, and there she stayed, and she helped, and she helped in the house, and she, you know, she had a bit of a memory problem then, but she helped around the house with, um, she stayed for dinner, she made sure everybody was okay, she looked after my mum, and that was her, no matter how older she got, and to be honest, she looked at age, and she stuck two fingers up at it, she really, really did, and with Alzheimer's, she literally stuck two fingers up to Alzheimer's, and Masha said, said, you know what, you're not doing this to me, and yes, unfortunately and heartbreakingly, her abilities changed as the years went by. But she was still Nan. She was still bright and she was still just so Nan and just so wonderful and just so... I'll always be in awe of those times of how she handled everything. And when she had a bad day, yes, it was a bad day. Yes, it was a difficult time. But you know, each time she'd come back fighting, I remember at 86 and she f had fallen and she had broken her hip and she went through uh, uh, a total femur replacement and she had a, uh, her hip and everything and she was in hospital for nearly six weeks. But, you know, the following day after the surgery, she was up and I was there and, you know, I was there every day with my mum and we were there every day. We were getting her back on her feet. We were working with her and she was so strong and resilient. Her 90th birthday. I remember we were at her 90th birthday, and Nan was absolutely, she was dressed beautiful, and she was all the time. Pearls was my Nan's favourite, and like a dusty light pink, and she always had medium golden brown hair, tons of hair, back combed like a skyscraper, honestly, tons of it, all around here, beautiful, and she always had pearls on, always, and um, on her 90th birthday, and she was sat in a chair when I walked into the lounge and with my mum and I, I ran up to her and I gave her a hug and um and uh <laughs> of course really getting me bring all this back and I kissed her on the cheek and I said happy birthday nan happy birthday nanny because even though I was in my 20s I always called her nanny and um and uh and I said happy 90th birthday and she turned and she said I'm not 90 I'm 80 and honestly I will never ever forget that i never forget that. We had pictures and we had stories and um, we sung and we had like a party where my nan um, lived and um, yeah, yeah, lo just lovely, magical, magical times. Growing up, myself and my twin brother, we were with nan a lot. She used to take us to school or collect us from school if mum was working or when mum was there because my mum seen my nan every single day, every single day without fail every single day um and they had such a close bond such a close bond they'd go shopping together all the time if they went anywhere it was together if honestly if they weren't together it was unusual um in the summers in my nan's garden it used to be my mum and my nan sat in the sun done up to the nines you'd think honestly and um and we were at school and we'd come back from school and then we'd all have like fun together and and snacks and drinks and and just really lovely lovely magical times which you'd never want to end um and then of course as we got older um we were still remain very very close now would always come out here every weekend for dinner mum and nan would always would always be chatting or catching up or or anything um of course there were times when life unfortunately got in the way but but nan was always phoning at, all the time and it's just lovely lovely memories all the time you used to go to all different places and have days out and things and yeah just really really magical times magical times and when nan had um when she was diagnosed with alzheimer's do you know i thought this was all going to end but do you know what nan had alzheimer's for 12 years 12 years 
When she hit 90, I was frightened that things were going to really drastically change. But she's not 91, 92, she still... She was still warm and mellow in the autumn of her life, and I love that phrase. And um, she was still just so incredible. She really, really was. And her strength and her determination um, for life and just to keep going. Now, she taught me four th- She taught me many, many things in this life, but she taught me four things. Number one, work hard. Number two, no matter what, keep going. Number three, always look your best. And number four, family is everything. And that was it. And family was everything to her. She always looked her best and she always worked hard and she always kept going. And um, when she got to 93, she started to be a little bit more slower, but still always, whenever you'd seen her, and she'd been to the hairdressers every week, hair coloured all the time, still very, very chatty. When she got to 93, she seemed to become a little bit more quieter, where the Alzheimer's was becoming to be a little bit more of a struggle. And she began to take on a bit more of a frailer sort of look, but she still loved it out in the garden. And... um, And then I started to really realise that through growing up with this lady who was so strong and so sort of could take on the world, she began to need quite a bit more help, quite a bit more help and um, a bit more support. But she certainly still wasn't giving up. Um, I used to take her out all the time and um, then that kind of unfortunately had to stop because of how frail she was getting. And then when I got to 94, um, of course, this was around the COVID times. So this was COVID really hit Nan really hard because, of course, Nan lived in a retirement home for people with Alzheimer's and people with dementia. We were very privileged. Um, Nan had her own apartment and it was beautiful. And um, every day, every season, I would change it. So Christmas, Easter, um, Mother's Day, the summer season, I'd, I'd have like a mural on the wall, um, there would always be fresh flowers, there was pictures on every wall, there was her land army pictures, there was pictures of granddad, her children, her grandchildren, Nan and me, my twin brother and me, mum and Nan, and, and the closest people to her, the room was always crammed full of those things and it had ornaments, and, and just like her home, just like her home, and in her bathroom, always the top products, if me and mum went out shopping or anything like that at all, the top sort of shampoos or body washes or creams or or anything like that at all. And my mum would always buy her her clothes all the time or jewellery or like her costume jewellery or like cardigans or blouses or jumpers or silk scarves. And that was always Nan. And um, we're, I feel very privileged that the Lord blessed us in a situation to be able to do that. Um, it was very much my mum and me what done that, what kept her like that. And um, I'm so proud that we were able to do that and keep Nan up together as Nan. The family, in my heart, I don't feel some of them tried hard enough and that really hurts. Um, and do you know, what? I could get very angry to think that, do you know, what? there's this incredible blessing of a lady. And actually, she's your grandmother. And some, she's your mum. And do you know what? Sometimes they would barely see her. And I think, you know, how dare you for everything what she done? But you know, I didn't let it bother us. I did not let it bother us. And mum kept me strong. And I like to think I kept mum strong. And we got her. We kept her going. And um, it was mainly, it was my brothers, my mum, my aunt and my uncle. And she had all those, all those family members. Um, and Nan... In her years of Alzheimer's, she lost her daughter to lung cancer, which was horrific, absolutely hard and horrific. I remember going to a funeral and the first thing I wanted to do was come straight back and give Nan a hug. And I did. And um, so it hit my mum hard as well, because my mum mum and her sister, my aunt, were passed away. were very much like twins and were so close that sometimes they would clash. And then six months later, my Nan lost her son to lung cancer again. He smoked, but my aunt never did, and um, that was hard. It was hard, but do you know what? Nan remained strong. She remained strong. She is. This is a remarkable lady. 
which is my noun for eternity. And um, COVID hit us hard. I could see none for a long time, only for a glass room. And that was really hard. Not being able to give her a hug, not being able to hold her hand, not being able to kiss her on the cheek, brush her hair. My mum helping dress none. That was hard. And then we went from planning, um, went from planning her her birthday party, her 95th birthday. Nam's taken ill on the 30th of May. I just had my coronary construction surgery on the 25th, so I was recovering. And um, the phone rang. Mum was outside, and uh, my other brother answered the phone, and he ran quickly outside and said it was where it was Nan's, it was Nan's home. And they'd asked to speak to Mum, because Mum was top of the list if they called for any problems. And then I think it was my aunt. Then I'm on there. I was on there as well. Um, and we had a very strong relationship with the home as well. We were always there. And they knew us by first name terms, and we did them. And this turned out to be a paramedic on the phone. And then had been. Um, I knew when Mum got to the phone. I knew something wasn't right. I knew something wasn't right. And. Um, Mum took the phone call and uh, Nan had been eating dinner. The rest of her Sunday best, I can imagine. Um, and she was eating and um, she took a mouthful and she breathed back and she began to choke. And Nan panicked so much about her breathing and her throat. Always throughout her life, she was always claustrophobic. Um, sometimes even nail varnish used to set off or her necklaces used to sometimes have to come off when she was fine if she used to feel like it. So that haunts me how she must have felt in that moment and uh, when she started to choke it gave her a massive heart attack. Sorry. And um, we got there as quickly as we could. And I walked in the room, I just knew what I had done to her from the last time I'd seen her. And she was tired the last time I'd seen her. She was tired, and that was only a couple of days before my surgery. She still looked amazing, she still looked like man. No one near looked 95. Oh my goodness, no one near. And, um, but she was tiny, she was, she'd lost so much weight, she was tiny, tiny. You could see the illness was becoming to be more of a struggle for her. When I walked in the room, I seen my beautiful nan. what this illness had done to her, and what that had done to her. So we stayed there, and this was, um, I suppose, about midday on the 30th, and we stayed with her all throughout the day, and all of the family came, even people, one by one, who hadn't seen her for years. And I sat by Nan's bedside, and I was, my mum was sat with me as well, and mum was looking after Nan and I was and we'd rub her hair and we'd rub her face and talk to her and tell her one by one who was coming in and who was there because Nan couldn't at the time she was she was really ill and um, as all the family left we stayed and that was all throughout the night my mum was holding her all throughout the night and that was just heartbreaking seeing my mum and my Nan my two rocks in this world. My mum holding my hand slipping away. And in the early hours of the night, Nan opened her eyes and she looked up at my mum. I won't go into it because it's their personal treasure. It was almost like Nan was asking for permission. You know what she kept going? And into the 31st of May, Two years ago, she had her clothes changed several times because we, we knew that she would want to still look how she was, and we had her hair all done for her nicely. And she was she wasn't awake, but she was aware. I knew she was aware. And at twenty past twelve, she closed her eyes, and she drifted away. She died. 
But you know what? And I always say it, and faith is a huge thing for me. But I was looking at Nan, and I was holding onto her hand, and she just turned white in seconds, and I seen her soul leave her. It was almost like that she was free. And she took a place of my grandfather up in heaven with the Lord above. I paused. My mum was just how you'd expect her to be. My twin brother went into a panic attack. My eldest brother just sobbed. And I just stared at Nan, wanting her back. You know, she was gone only for seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. I wanted her back. I wanted her back. Is it wrong me to say now I want her back? I know she was 95, we didn't quite get there, but in my heart she's 95 and she's at peace in her 95th year. You know, every day, this picture stays at my desk where I work from home. And I talk, and I laugh, and I sing, and I share memories. And the other picture along the other side is this one. Me and my dad. Two years, but it still feels like it's only been two minutes. And you may think, why just for my channel? Because my channel, my friends, is not always just putting up things about motivation or reviewing products or great hair or getting people through or supporting but sometimes i need this sometimes i need to let things out and sometimes to put it on my channel is an easier way um and it means the world to be able to share it as well and to capture such a remarkable incredible lady my nan forever my nan forever my friend thank you for allowing me to do this thank you very much if you've watched this God bless, take great care. If you take anything away from this, um, family is always our family forever. However, they're not with us to hold hands, as to speak, to hug, to love, for that long, actually, especially grandparents. They're always there, and they'll always be your grandparents in eternity, and until one day, when we take that step into heaven and we are rejoiced and we are together again with the Lord above, guiding us with Jesus, until that happens, cherish them around you. Cherish your mum, cherish your dad, your nan, your grandfather. Love your uncles, your aunts, your brothers, your sisters. Just love family. And don't waste one minute of it. Not at all. I often say to my mum, and it's unfair really, isn't it? But I often say to her, if I could just have five more minutes, five minutes, let me tell her how much I loved her. I told her how much I loved her all the time. But I tell her so much more in just five minutes. Thank you very much for being here. And on that note, God bless. And just take great care and love those family. Bye for now. See you soon. Thank you.